Okay, uh, Mitch here again. So yesterday I showed you guys the uh, first video of my new all-in-one siren control box, uh, which I've dubbed version two. Uh, the first one, which I made uh, back in college, which is probably around five uh, years ago now. Um, this one is a lot smaller and lighter than that one, which is nice. Uh, the other one was uh, not only much larger in size, but um, a lot heavier because it had an actual AR timer in there, um, as well as the enclosure being metal and the backing plate being a heavy gauge steel plate, which made for a nightmare not only to store it, but to lift it around, play with it, yada, 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 you get the point. So, like I said, this one is dubbed version 2. On the outside, you can see it resembles an AF timer. Uh, I painted these Eaton switches. Um, so this one is silver for test, uh, which is just a momentary off on. Uh, blue for alert, fire for, or I should say red for fire. That one's not done yet, uh, but I can show you how I might uh, tackle that one um, in a minute yellow for a uh, whaling or attack, and then black for cancel. And I uh, can open it up, take a look. There are three different sets of finger safe terminal blocks. This one here on the right is just uh, the control power. So that's um, just kind of a regular 14 gauge, 120 uh, volt cord that just gets plugged into any old outlet, and that powers the uh, uh, DC power supply for the scanner and the DTMF8 Plus uh, decoder. Um, this next one here is the output block. So this is what actually um, gets connected to the siren. You can see over there I have uh, the Model A that I tested yesterday with this. And then uh, the Seco Mac uh, GP3, which I actually haven't uh, tested yet. I got it uh, refurbished and repainted by a motor shop, so it should uh, wail like a son of a gun. Um, at least I'm hoping so. Um, anyway, uh, this last one here on the left, um, this is your input power, so that gets connected to your source. Uh, what I'm using for a source to get the GP3 up to full speed is a Quit 220. Um, really simple device you just have uh, a two two input leads on here one goes to one 120 volt socket uh, the other one goes to another 120 volt socket um, but it has to be on the separate uh, phase in your house so I don't know how many of you know that but the electricity coming into your home is actually 220 volts uh, but then uh, the two different phases get separated out into 120s and, uh, you know, combined with the neutral. So, um, yeah, you, you kind of get the point on that. Taking another look at the box here, um, I'll kind of just go through this sequentially as to how things kind of move through the box, how the power kind of flows. So input block this goes to the uh, contactor here and there's a uh, thermal overload protector and uh, a cutoff switch so say instead of disconnecting the siren and everything I just want to test the contactor I just switch that to off uh, that way there's no power actually going to the output block and uh, going to the siren and killing my ears when I just want to make sure the thing works so that's the uh, power circuit for the timing circuit. Uh, this is going to be a little complicated, but uh, try and bear with me here. So these are both off delay um, electronic uh, timing relays. Uh, they are Allen Bradley FS uh, B3s. Uh, they range anywhere from 0.15 minutes to 3 minutes. Obviously, I have it set to the max setting, so it replicates the 3-minute cycle. Uh, this one just kind of works on its own. Um, 
that's for the three minute alert. Um, so the timing relay it just goes straight to the motor contactor. Um, you can see if maybe I can get a shot of how the wiring here works. Uh, I don't really think I can do that since it's such a mess. But anyway, uh, once this gets a electrical pulse from the momentary relays on the DTMFit Plus, it will uh, start the off delay cycle. So. It'll provide power to the uh, control circuit on the contactor for uh, three minutes continuously. And once that three minutes expires, um, it stops providing power and the contactor opens, turning the siren off. For the attack circuit, um, these two work together. So this is another uh, three minute off delay electronic uh, timing relay. Uh, this is actually a flasher or repeat cycle timer, so this works exactly the same as this. It provides constant power for three minutes, but um, instead of this being connected to the contactor, this actually powers this repeat cycle timer. So while this is operating, this is uh, powered and is actually connected to the contactor. So once this is powered, it starts with an eight second on cycle and then followed by a four second off cycle and then it just alternates in between the two until the three minute cycle on this ends, at which point the attack cycle is complete. Um, moving on, uh, we have the actually exact same uh, Uniden scanner I had in my version one and uh, making an appearance again for version 2 is the DTM F8+. Plus. I'm not really aware of anything that is similar to the DTM F8+. Plus. It's really easy to use, easily worth uh, 200 250 bucks, whatever it costs, um, simply for how simple it is to set up, yada, yada, yada. Um, interesting story about it. Um, I actually had it wired improperly at first, um, and then it blew out a relay in there. So in order to avoid that again, and should you attempt to replicate this, I highly recommend putting a uh, inline fuse to the input power side of each of the DTMF8 Plus's uh, relays. And these have just, uh, See if I can get it off. These are actually fairly well secure. Anyways, I'm not going to try to do that with one hand. Just um, it's just a standard one amp uh, fuse in there. So you know, one amp, one amp blade fuse. That's all that the uh, DTMF8 Plus's uh, relays can handle is one amp. Um, since wiring this properly, I haven't had any issues with fuses blowing out or anything, so it should be fine. Uh, but, you know, just as a precaution, I would put those fuses in there. They're five cents a piece versus uh, however much money you're going to have to spend sending it back to Intuitive Circuits getting it fixed like I did. So now that we kind of have a basic idea of the layout... I can show you um, how the switches kind of work to actually activate the thing. So these buttons um, all get uh, power from the input block and they each go to the respective uh, items that they're intended to activate. So silver, this just uh, bridges the neutral gap to the uh, motor starter so this this just you know closes the circuit it's not hooked up to any of the relays or anything it's just a direct connection to the contactor uh, this button for the alert here uh, that is the the um, that closes the circuit for the um, uh, electrical pulse needed to activate the uh, uh, 
electronic relay for the alert cycle. Um, this just closes the circuit to provide a brief pulse to activate uh, the attack cycles, off delay, uh, timing relay. So really not too complicated there. This, uh, this cancel button, uh, that just cuts off power to um, the timing relay. So when this, this is a normally closed button, whereas the rest of these are, are normally open. So the neutral power for the relays goes through this normally closed button. So when you depress this and open the circuit, power stops going to these and they um, actually reset to zero. It's not like you activate it again. And however many seconds were left on your last cycle um, are what you get. It's actually, um, it's a reset to zero. So that's nice, uh, removes a lot of headaches there. Um, I don't think there's too much else I can really talk about um, before we just go ahead and test the thing. Um, maybe other than just telling you the fact that this is also operable by radio. Um, so the scanner picks up the DTMF8 tones from my handheld Yaizu, um, and yes, all the functions work on it, I'm um, including uh, the cancel function, so that's actually something I should maybe talk about quick. Um, the, the neutral line for the timing circuits is not only routed through this normally closed switch, it's also routed through one of the uh, relays on the DTMF8 Plus um, in the normally closed configuration as well. So a opening of that circuit from either depressing the cancel switch or the relay getting um, actuated on, on the DTMF8 Plus will momentarily kill power to those off delay relays, thus um, ending the cycle and resetting those timers back to zero. So, all right, I think it's time we take a quick look at the sirens. So, like I said, this is a GP3. Um, it's probably the smallest uh, dual tone siren made that is actually um, an actual air raid siren. This is way, way louder than the Model A. Um, I could hear this clearly outside my house from the listening outside with this in the basement, whereas this, not really. Um, this hurt enough without hearing protection. I don't think I would ever set this off without hearing protection, at least with me being in the same room as it. Uh, but I think the shop who restored this did an excellent job. Um, so it runs off of, you know, 220, 240 volts, um, either AC or DC. It's a universal series bond motor, so it doesn't care whether it's getting AC or DC or 50 hertz or 60 hertz, or whatever. It's just... Um, a universal motor will take whatever you throw at it, which is always nice. So this is, all in all, this is a very uh, headache-free uh, siren enthusiast um, uh, play setup, I, I guess. Um, it's not really a professional setup by any means. It's just a really easy, fun way to play with uh, play with your sirens and not get too heavily invested monetarily. Um, time uh, might, it, the building this might be a time suck, but, you know, I just find stuff like this fun to do, so um, I'm actually going to leave the camera downstairs um, and take my radio up with me to activate it. Um, I don't think or actually, you know what, I'll just stand here and do it. I have my hearing protection, so that way I'll get to hear the tones. Um, so without further ado, first test of the GP3 with uh, the new version 2 siren control box. Alright, I 
think the camera is nicely situated. Go ahead and do just a little bit of alert. I'll hit the cancel um, and then do a little bit of attack and that should be good for the video. You know what, I think it would help if I switched the motor cutoff to on. guys at the motor shop said it wailed like hell um they're certainly right uh, all right well thank you for watching um if you guys have any further questions don't hesitate to ask actually i lied that's not the end of, of the video i remembered i was going to talk about the fire circuit so just kind of a quick 20 second uh overview of that so i left this space blank intentionally that will be just big enough to house uh actually the rig original style signatrol flasher unit um i guess i could go electronic with that um but this should fit one of those signatrol units um i think the only other if i were to do that I think the only other timing relay I would need is another off delay to power the uh, flasher unit. So that's why there is a space left here. So I think you kind of get the idea with that one. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.